Daddy? Yes. Why is it that black business people are greedy? Black business people are greedy? Yes. Okay. I like that question. That's a smart question. Uh, everyone is greedy. But In uh, what way? Black, black business people are more greedy than any other race in the entire universe. Follow me, I'll tell you why. Come in. Eddie, come. Uh, Where do I start? Black business people are greedy because they are not used to owning things. We have what we call a first generation ownership syndrome. If this, this syndrome affects us uh, so bad that even when opportunities come to a black businessman, I've come across the situation. Please close the door. I've come across the situations too many times. Uh, first, I did with my younger brother. My younger brother approached me with is in IT. He approached me with a very nice business concept. I was very thrilled. He used to work for IBM, and I was very thrilled. And I said to myself, "Okay, this is nice." He needed mm -hmm. like. Very small amount of money, 250,000 bucks. 250,000. That's how much he wanted from me. And I looked at the business plan and I said to myself, this is great. I can put money in this. Then I asked him a question. What does this 250,000 rand represent in terms of equity in your business? He said it's 20%. I said, okay. Justify it for me. Because I looked at the numbers. I gone through his balance sheet. I got through everything. And uh, it was already operational. So I went through his income statement as well. I looked at all the, I looked at his cash flow statement. I analyzed a lot of factors in his business and I realized this is where the opportunities are. This is where he's doing it wrong. This is where he should be going and this is how much money would need even the 250,000 he was asking for was too much so i asked him how did you get to 20 percent for 250 so you're valuing your business at 1 million rand actually a little bit over 1 million rand so i asked him why mm -hmm. then he <clears throat> gave me a very Stupid answer that I didn't get. Uh, then I said to him, this is what I will do. I'll give you not 250. I worked on numbers. I did my own financial modeling on what your business would need for the next five years. I'll give you 2 million rands. For, this will cover you for the next five years. You only have to worry about uh, salaries because you don't have a lot of stuff. You only have three people. You don't have to worry about rent because I'll bring you into my own uh, operation. You will operate from my office, so you won't need to uh, worry about the rent and all of that. Still, on top of that, my brother said, you know what? Keep your money. I'm not interested. Why? Because for him, giving me, when I did the valuation of his business, assets were like 36,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. 36,000 rands. Yes, he could have um, a, 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 a good a, a goodwill that, that would, you know, but still that would not trigger a 20% uh, uh, representation from a 250,000 rand cash infusion in the business. So I said he's, he's talking nonsense. You know, he, my brother ran away from me. He didn't take the money. Why? And that bothered me. So it didn't bother me just for him. 
it was my intention to discover why is it that black business people also like so when you ask this question you hit a nerve why is it that black business people are so greedy? greedy they are greedy because he wanted to own 80 percent of a 36 thousand rand business i'm bringing 250 and i was even offering 2 million rand for five years for 49 percent of his business and i said to him i'll bring in an accountant you will sign with at the bank so that you don't misuse the money i give you you won't move money from the account unless this person signs with you all of that to him was a language he doesn't like if i were to tell you now his company is closed down Hey, that's my blood, younger brother. Like I'm um, five years older than him. Because of greed. Because of greed. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very bad, bad, bad thing about us, um, the black nation. So I've come across, I'll, I'll give you another example, because we invest in businesses, uh, sometimes startup companies. Though we're not venture capitalists, but we do look at great prospects. If a company is good, you see there's value here even if because we go long term we are value investors we don't believe in investment where we make money short term and we flip out and we, we all, all then we, we we exit the investment we believe long term we we assist that's why in all our investments we we take a position uh, 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 or rather an approach that seeks to influence strategy from a board level where we appoint someone there so 99.9%. So, my little girl, you asked Daddy a good question. 99.9% .9 of black business people would rather own 100% of a 10,000 rand business rather than owning 2% of a 100 million rand company. All this emanates from one thing great. great. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think this is going to go where, where it's going now. <laughs> Let me have a sip. It's a Friday. What's today's date? It's the 6th. It's the 6th. It's a Friday, uh, 6th of December, 2019. So I like putting dates on whenever yeah, she attacks me and she ambushes me. But I'm going to say something. Just wait. It's after hours already. So... Um, what time is it? Four past seven. Seven minutes past. Four oh. minutes past seven p.m. Mm. Nineteen o four, on Friday the sixth of December, twenty nineteen. We're still in the office working. I didn't know that this is gonna go away. Um, I'm thinking it's going now. We, <laughs> I'm touching another topic, but in the same topic. The reason why we have black people complaining about white monopoly capital. The reason why we have white monopoly capital, as much as we have black, but black monopoly capital is not successful. It's there. But it's not successful, like white monopoly. There is white monopoly capital. You can't run away from it. It's there. But is it bad? No. It's good. What is happening? People is creating jobs. It's a group of white people who decided to monopolize certain industries. It's a business transaction. Do you know why we do not have a successful black monopoly capital? No. Because we want to own 100% of everything. <laughs> it goes back to greed. We do not want to form partnership or coalitions with other black people and sit and say we want to own this five percent that family owns that five percent the other family owns that five percent and we're going to go out and go after mining we're going to go after energy we're going to go after it or whatever the, the, the uh, 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 industries that we want to uh, uh, invest in black people are greedy and the greed of black people has caused us to fail to organize. We cannot organize. We can mobilize. But we cannot organize. We can get masses of black people out of the streets to go and boycott. 
Because it represents destruction. To even go and toy toy on the street, that's destruction. Killing uh, uh, innocent people, hitting robots and, and destroying stores and looting people's stores. That's destruction. It's, it's not doing any good for our economy. That's what we've been good a lot for. <laughs> it's unfortunate and very true. If black people were not as greedy as we are, we would not be in a situation where we are complaining about white monopoly capital. These are rich people who are able to say, in this transaction, I'm willing to own this small percentage. And that other white man can own this small percentage. And then, and here's the thing now, you will fight them and say it's white monopoly capital, but they hire black people and give them jobs. People eat. <laughs> And then you go after them, you attack them. Because that's foolishness also. You cannot be attacking people who are providing jobs. People are holding the economy by the bones. Do you follow me? Greed in our nation, and it's not going to end in our lifetime. It's going to come after us. It's going to continue. You can, you can look. I was looking at, uh, I was studying some government, uh, 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 I was doing a research on some government um, uh, governmental or rather uh, mayoral structures in in, in, um, in in the country. I was looking at uh, municipalities, I was studying municipalities, and if you look, 90% of your municipalities that are getting looted, there's a black mayor. <laughs> and he doesn't mind to take tenders and give to the family. True. Knowing very well that he will get caught. But it's better for him to get caught having eaten than not to eat at all. And then you will face the music at least he has stolen. Do you follow? Yes. If you have to go through all this tender tenderpreneurship, you will see that there's no tender that actually there are tenders, but I would say 20% of the tenders are issued in a manner that does not represent what I call a patronage. You see? Yes. Where tenders were not given to friends or friends or people that, for some reason, the issuers of the tenders uh, were going to benefit from the enclosures. There were no kickbacks. 80% have kickbacks. That's why when you go to provinces like Pumalanga, you will find out out of 100 business people, only 10 know how to run a business. The rest, when you speak corporate business, they start talking tenders. They don't hear you. you like to speak in Chinese. <laughs> All they know is tenders. Mm. Mm. And then they, they get quoted uh, a businessman so and so. You put him in a bottle. You talk strategy. He's like a baby. He's like five years in a bottle, like a layman. But he's sitting on a company that's generating five billion rand from tenders a year in revenues. He knows nothing. But he knows nothing. So why, why, why your question, my baby? It's a deep question and it, it, it needs God's intervention and prayer for our people that our people will open their minds and stop this mentality of selfishness because our people like using this mentality of selfishness that I'll give an example I was reading a story of the blue balls you saw that uh, Mr. Uh, uh, um, Mr. Rupert bought equity in the blue balls and uh, that rugby club and Mutsipe bought as well mm -hmm. yes do you know why even Mutipe was successful to buy equity in that club? No. It's because he understands business. He doesn't need to know how to run it. He just needs to understand. He understands economics. And the fact that he does, no one would even block him from doing business because he won't come in the blue pools after that he's in there. He says, hey, 
we, we, we need to now enter this rugby game and bring more black people. Uh, we must our people. <laughs> All that nonsense won't happen there because he's a well-versed businessman. I commend Petrus Potsik for that. He's a very smart businessman. So, we will, it will take us years to penetrate industries. That's why I was looking at um, a WhatsApp message. Actually, not a WhatsApp. What do you call that thing? Twitter. Mm -hmm. Caesar Dome. You know him, that guy who's a DJ? Mm -hmm. He's in farming. And some other guys, they farming. He's got cows. I, I, ooh, I was so happy to see that. I even uh, commented that on Twitter. And then, what makes me happy about it is that when I see there is at least a new breed of black people that are able to penetrate industries that other black people thought were not penetrated by blacks. Because they thought that uh, black people uh, cannot do that because that is the white domain. There's no white dominated industry. The only reason why we have industries where there's white control, not dominated, white control, it's because white people can organize we are disorganized. Today, I'll put you on this chair. I've done it many times. I'll put you here and put another company here and put another company there. Or even we go downstairs to the boardroom. I call 10 companies, black-owned companies. There's this transaction I want us to work on. My equity in this transaction will be 10%, but I want to make sure all of you guys eat more than I do. We sit and we structure. Do you know, before the close of business, two or three of these people will call me and say, but do you see those ones? We must cut them out. That's black. We cannot work together. The ability to work together as black people has affected the growth of the black nation economically. And it will continue to do so. Because we do these things while the young stars are watching as well in business. They are learning from all the traits that we, 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 we do. Youngsters are watching. There are great business people who are black. Great. A lot. There's a lot of them because we represent a huge chunk of the country. But there's also a lot, like now, like, ten times a lot. Of those that are ignorant, arrogant, and unwilling. So why do we have greedy black people? Black people are not used to owning anything in this world. So when they get that one thing, for them, it's like pride. Mama, I made it. Mm. Do you see? Yes. They don't understand that making it is the ability to look behind you and see how many lives changed you because of your existence in this universe. Then you can go tell your mother. How, not because you've got a, a Rolls Royce, you live in a double story or triple story house, you own a nice business that is uh, recording crazy margins. It doesn't matter. It is not a, a, a something that matters a lot. What matters is that when you look, when you, you don't even need to look back. You snap back and see how many people's lives have changed because of you. Then you go and tell people you are successful. Not because you've got money in the bank. I know a lot of people who've got a lot of money, but they're not successful. You see the thing with money. Money is crazy because even fools can have money. You give Papoon money. Papoon, a papoon can have money. Hey. So you give money to someone or a certain class of mentality uh, and say, this is the money. That's why, hey. that's why you take one million right now, you go to Cape Town and give it to a, a white young man who's 22 years old. He will take that money and go invest it in the stock market.
But you take the same one million rand and give it to a black man. In Soweto, in a forum house of 200,000, he will pack a hammer, H1, for 1.2 million day. With spinning wheels, shiny rims. We are not used to owning things. If we as a nation, someone will say because we grew up with nothing, it's true. But it's not the same case now. We should be educating our children. We cannot be holding on to the past. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. We cannot be holding on to the past. We need to move on. Life is continuing. We cannot be holding on to the past. If you look at it now, uh, seven years later, you go to the white man who invested one million, he's got 22 million rent, and the guy, the, 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 the hammer is broken, it's parked outside, uh, they balance the hammer with crates uh, so that it doesn't fall, beer crates. <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a wrong mentality altogether. It's a wrong mentality altogether. South Africa is a great country. Yes, we are in the verge of a meltdown. I guarantee you we will be downgraded in January. In the next, say, less than 40 days, we will be downgraded to junk status, officially. Uh, it's bad. And a lot of people will blame it on other people. But even that comes from the poor governance from us. The inability to manage resources as black people in this country in positions of power. Does not come from uh, 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 companies uh, or certain individuals. It does not come from apartheid. It entirely comes from it, our inability to govern. Black people have proven more than once that governing is a problem. There are white people who can govern too, but not as much as black people. You put a black man in an office of power, he messes up. That's why we thank God for the likes of Tito Moweni, the likes of uh, uh, the president Cyril Ramaphosa, the likes of Sikhez Galala, people who, who, who take governance serious, the likes of uh, uh, a friend of mine, I've been seeing him in a long time though, uh, Mr. Banyaz and Sufi, the likes of um, what's his name? Uh, um, David Makura. You know, people who, are, who know how to run government. Because you see, we're going into a recession. We're going to stay there long because the problems we have will worsen instead of getting better. This is a topic for another day. But uh, the truth of the matter is that black people are capable to do great things in this world. History has proven it. We have got Michael Jordan being the best uh, basketball uh, uh, player the world has ever seen. Mm. We have got great people in this world who've done things that are amazing. We've got a lady who owns one of the hugest mining reserves, Umamut Defni, Mashile Ngosi, uh, of Kalahari Resources. She's a black woman. We've got a lot of black people, about Gloria Serube, Louisa Mujela. We've got Patrice Mutipe. We've got Putuma Tlego. We've got a lot of great people. But if the majority of us that is falling away could learn from the ones mm -hmm. that are doing better, this country would become a better place. Okay. Even the greed that we have in our hearts to own everything, even if everything is nothing, you'd rather own 100% of nothing rather than a small piece of mm. something greater than you. Mm -hmm. That generation or that, that, that mentality will die down and God will, new, will raise a new breed of black people that will... They will not be chasing dreams because those dreams will make them look better than their neighbors. They will not be chasing dreams or because those dreams will uplift them in the community so that the community will be below them. But they will be raising the communities as they rise with them. A new breed 
of Christian. That will not be happy to eat a loaf of bread while another black man and another white man, another Indian in the corner is hungry. That's the nation we need to build. A nation we could be proud of. A nation, even if you're sitting in your seatbelt at your 80s, 90s, and you're about to die, you say, I'm proud of the part I played in this world to make sure that this country is better because you know you're leaving your children in a place where your heart is comfortable. Mm. We are the majority of the people here. We cannot be blaming people who represent 7.9% of this country. White people represent 7.9% of South Africa. Mm. So we are responsible for every chaos and everything that is going wrong here. Mm. We need to own up to our mistakes because also the failure to recognize our mistakes will impede our growth. True. And it will stop us from, from changing. You will not change if you don't see you are wrong. How do you change if you don't recognize that you are wrong? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, baby. I went too deep. <laughs> yes. This is Dr. Amanda Lamba, Veritas Capital, South Africa, Johannesburg. Salute. Amen. That child is possible. It's